before I start, I'll just show you uh, two flowers. One flower is uh, presumably very beautiful, one is very ugly. But uh, can you say why one is beautiful and why one is ugly? There's something missing in one flower that is more in, another, in the other flower. So what is missing in one flower? Can you just think what it is? If you, if you ask an architect or a designer, they will say a lot of things. But I don't know, I know, I know only one thing. It is entropy. In one flower, there is a lot of entropy, in one flower, it is less. But what is entropy? For those who have forgotten what entropy is, uh, entropy is a very deep concept in uh, thermodynamics and statistical mechanics. But for our purposes, entropy is just a measure of disorderliness, how disordered things are. So you can see some paper clips arrangement here. To the left hand side, they are arranged very orderly. And as you go towards the right hand side, they are becoming more disordered. So entropy is a measure of disorderliness. So in one flower, there is high entropy, in another flower, low entropy. So when I design buildings, sometimes some people say these buildings are beautiful. And uh, the reason they say proportions, I don't know, golden ratio, but I don't know those things, I have, I don't remember them. I have tried to do only one thing, that is to reduce the entropy of the design. So this is my shrewd, my definition of beauty. Beauty is the perception of low entropy and other things. So let's begin. I'm an architect as he introduced me uh, and I'm here to tell you how I solve complex problems today. It is because building is always a solution to a set of problems and the problems are very complicated. There's a social aspect to our problems, there are economic aspects, there are environmental aspects, and even there are firefighting aspects, there are a lot of aspects. So if I give a solution to each of these problems individually, I take the social problem, I solve it, and then go to the environmental problem, and then solve it. If I solve these problems individually, one by one, answer becomes like this. This is how Indians have solved the, the problem of telegram station and electricity together. Yeah. So it's complicated, it made no sense, it's not livable, it's ugly, and it's high entropy. Okay, so therefore we architects uh, have found a good solution to all these social, economic, cultural, environmental function, all these problems, we have solution. We forget the problems and we put up just simple cubes, non irregular buildings. It's good, there's no entropy and it's simple and elegant. So that is what we can see actually from the beginning of human civilization. Uh, from the times of the ancient Egypt pyramids to Buddhist architecture to Greek and Roman architecture to classical architecture and most profoundly the modern Roman architecture, the buildings are out of simple geometric forms. The thing is these forms, they don't come out as a response to a problem. They don't come out as a response to the wind flow, as, the, as a response to the sun path or anything. They can't be that such forms because they are rigid geometric forms. But is that the way nature solves problems? Now this is a solution to a complicated set of problems. It is complicated than a building, so it has to produce another flower like this. It, it's reproductive and it has environmental problems and there are functional problems. You have to supply water, nutrition for this to grow. So all the problems are there but it is a solution to all those problems. Yet, you can see it is very simple and there is no entropy. So the thing is, this socio-economic, cultural, environmental, functional problems, they can be solved and come up with simple, elegant solutions. It is possible to do. 
and that is what parameter the system does. So that is my topic. So parameter the system, it's a, it's a movement of architecture, it's a design style. So parameter the system is all about using programs, algorithms, and computers to manipulate equations for design purposes. So I'll simply explain what parameter system is. I don't think I can do it. Uh, so this is Antonio Gaudi, and this is him with his uh, nice chapel design in the early 1900s. So when he designed this, what he did was he hung some uh, weights on the ceiling with some cables. And then this is the chapel. Uh, mind you, if you want to see the chapel, you have to turn your head. And then see because it's upside down. So thing is, uh, he can adjust the height of these cables with some pulleys, and then he can raise these minarets up, bring them down, change the form of the roof, and he can see what is happening to the chapel dynamically. And this is one of the, uh, this is the first uh, parametric design we see, but it's a very primitive parametric design. And today, with this uh, visual programming languages, we can do uh, much deep things as parametric design. So this is one of the projects we are recently working on in Colombo Boat City. Uh, and you can see there are five buildings. What you see in the left hand side is the algorithm uh, our team has used to design this building. Uh, it's an algorithm for one of these five buildings. I need not have five algorithms for five buildings because height of this building is just a parameter. So I can adjust the height of uh, this algorithm from zero rows to infinite number of rows. But if you look at these uh, windows uh, shown in this design, uh, they disappear as you go up. Uh, that is because they are calculated in response to the requirement of flow, uh, the regulation from flow area to the wall area ratio. Plus, it comes as a response to the sun path movement. You can see I have I don't have to worry of these windows uh, as I change the height of the building or the form of the building. I need not to go to each floor and then refix them. They automatically get adjusted. So everything is dynamic and everything is interconnected. So that is what parametric design is. Uh, the advantage of uh, this is uh, it makes the process, processing power of computer into one part of our thinking process. So that is the most important thing. So we, with this technology, we can join our mind with computer imaging and become one with the computer. So in parametric design, mind and computer become one system. And we let the mind to use the computer's ability to perform billions of calculations per second. I will take more time, don't worry. <laughs> uh, and uh, use it to generate brilliant ideas, that is the important thing. And without computers, mind alone can't think such great things. Okay, so this is how I solve complex problems. I think most of you are engineers. How do you solve complex problems today? <laughs> For those who are not engineers, I'll just explain the basics. So this is uh, about postmodern engineering mathematics. Uh, so this is your, how your ancestors did it, uh, the Galileo's of the Newtonian mathematics. This is Galileo's man, and this is his board. So with this equation, I think you all know this. Uh, B equals to plus 18. This equation, you can tell the velocity of this ball anywhere on this map. But if you give Galileo this kind of an and ask him, Galileo, what is the speed of this ball on top of this map? He can't tell because acceleration changes from place to place. So that is where uh, Newton and Leibniz came up this fantastic system calculus. And then uh, with that, you can calculate uh, changing uh, uh, acceleration or anything. So if this uh, planet is at A, you have very high acceleration because gravity is higher. If it is at B, it has less acceleration. But we are not problem calculating trajectory or velocity or anything because of calculus. So that is what you have been doing uh, as engineering, I suppose, 98%. Uh, so 
for which we code the pencil and paper mathematics. With this, you can calculate the uh, uh, pendulum at least when the angle is a uh, small angle, or what two celestial bodies moving uh, on which they are on gravity, or even uh, what happens in a black hole, uh, how it deforms space time. At least uh, to the event horizon, we can calculate with this thing, same system. But the problem comes when it comes to three bodies moving under gravity. Oh, this is the same pendulum I was talking about. If we have another pendulum to that one, this is the kind of behavior. So, can you calculate these trajectories uh, with pencil and paper? And then the third one is uh, two black holes colliding with each other, uh, forming a single black hole, and this is how gravity goes on. Because they, they modifies the definition of time for each other, so the, what is called now is different for two black holes together. You can't do it uh, with pencil and paper. So you can't do it with pencil and paper. But uh, today, uh, as we saw uh, in the future study presentations, you can do it. And the system is numerical integration. You know how it is. So if it is three celestial bodies like that, we build the trajectory, uh, moment after moment after moment, uh, integrating everything together. So it is possible with computers to do. So this is how uh, engineers uh, solve problems today. You identify the parameters of the problem, you build up into equations, and just give it to a computer to solve it. So uh, for example, this kind of fluid makes dynamic uh, thing you can study. And the velocity of the fluid can be a parameter. So you can just adjust it, and then see what happens to the fluid flow. So that is how you solve complex problems today. So how will I say I solve complex problems today? We are supposed to do things very different, isn't it? Just think how I said we are solving complex problems today. It's the damn same thing, only the terminology is different. So this is my message. So there's enough room in my design system for you to bring your shear forces, your bending moments, natural frequencies of buildings, and fix them into my algorithm. And they deserve to be a set of parameters that you form to my buildings and spaces. Similarly, in your room, in your side of the fan, there must be room for me to bring my parameters of vista, sun power, spin economics, social behavior and so forth, and fix them into your algorithm. Because uh, Alvaro Aalto once said, in architecture, nothing is as dangerous as dealing with separate problems. Nothing is as dangerous as dealing with separate problems. So I solve my problem without considering your structure and your services, and you solve your problem without considering uh, my problems, and when we put two answers together, you destroy the aesthetics I have created, and I destroy the elegance of your structure. And together we create something ugly, something in uh, high entropy. So this is my message, so it, I'm not going to tell anything philosophical, it's a, it's a very simple thing. Uh, you have been great things with postmodern engineering mathematics today, that no engineer has ever done before. And with parameterism, we are also doing great things that no architect has ever done before in the history of time. So this is the simple practical thing I'm saying. If we can start to work on a single visual programming language platform, that is where we can do much more greater things. So that's all, thank you.
color it out, okay? And you can see my, my life in the video. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you very much.